we have a visitor in the Akshin Community Studios. Uh, pretty much a legend around royalty. these parts. Any yeah, royal, royalty. Local royalty is and, uh, what Jake Plummer is. Definitely royalty tomorrow when uh, he'll be the co-grand marshal of the Fiesta Bowl Parade, the Verbo Fiesta Bowl Parade. Jake Plummer joins us in studio. It's been a while, Jake. Thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys. It makes me feel kind of, I don't know, uncomfortable Call me royalty. I just feel like <laughs> I'm just... Uh, I'm here to represent so many great people that have been supportive of me and uh, the opportunity to be in the Fiesta Bowl Parade is going to be a lot of fun to just see the f- see the fans, who comes comes out, who shows up. I always wonder, because I, I go back and I watch footage of you uh, when you played for ASU and, and you were so dynamic at a time when there weren't a lot of dual threat quarterbacks in football. If if you guys would have just closed out that championship, how different would the Valley have been? How different would this place look? Do you know what I mean, Vinny? I mm-hmm. know you know what you mean, what I mean. It's so close to doing it, too. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I I, I think we, we still left a pretty good stamp and indelible mark on the the memories of a lot of people here that, that were really taken, a, taken up in the storm of that year, that, that 96 season, the mm-hmm. undefeated season. Uh, the quality of, of guys and the, the coaches and the players that we had on that team. Um, you know, yeah, having a national championship would be really cool. It would have been really nice. That's why I came to ASU. That's what Bruce Snyder was the only coach who said, we feel you're an integral part of what we're trying to build, and that's a national championship team, and that's all I wanted when I came to, to go to college. Yeah. You with the education part also, but to, to play football and have that opportunity. So to have that opportunity come to fruition through all the hard work, um, yeah, we you can't go back, but we were right on the doorstep. We were right there to have won it. Yeah, what would it be like? I don't know. There'd be now, you know, all these other te- all these teams that follow would be compared to us constantly. Right. So, uh, even though we lost the Rose Bowl, we still don't talk about the winning team that won the Rose Bowl in '87 with Van R- with Rapper and all yeah, those guys. Yeah, and they yeah, won the Rose Bowl. And they so won it. They, you know, give hats off to that that team that actually won the Rose Bowl. We didn't, we didn't pull it out, but we had a we had a great time. It was a, a great great memories that a lot of people still hold on to as one of the greatest teams to come through the t- through the valley here. Jake Plummer in studio with us, uh, co Grand Marshal of the Verbo Fiesta Bowl Parade tomorrow. It's going on in the uh, p- parade route. Uh, the co Grand Marshal with you is a wildcat, but we'll let that slide. It's Richard Jefferson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. I, uh, Sun Devils and Wildcats coming together for the bigger cause. I, I mean, have you ever done anything like this before? I mean, yeah, I was asked to be the Grand Marshal of the ASU Homecoming Parade oh, cool. years back. Um, other than that, no, this is new to be in something this big. It's the most uh, most attended daily single daily event in in the state of Arizona for the year. You know, close to maybe a hundred thousand people will line the streets. So it'll be a lot of fun. I've been working on my wave. Yeah. Uh, making sure <laughs> very, I, it's very important. Uh, making sure I don't right. fatigue right. halfway through the fa- through the parade. Yeah. So I've been working, you know, am- ambidextrous, being a handball player, working <laughs> my left wave mm-hmm. also and my right wave. Uh, and, and in the spirit of competition, you know, this year's the- uh, theme is spirit of competition. You know, I'm going to whoop Richard in, in the wave competition and bring the, the territorial wave cup back to Arizona State. Where it belongs. <laughs> yeah, where, where it belongs. <laughs> Uh, you've been up to so much stuff since your playing days. There was, and not long ago, you used to come on with us weekly, talk college football, yeah. did the media thing. Uh, now I know you had some business ventures. Just uh, fill us in on what what you've been up to these days. Yeah, you know, life life moves fast. As uh, we realize, having kids definitely marks mm-hmm. time. So my kids are, are a big part of my life. I want to spend good time with them, make good memories. Uh, but living in Colorado, living in a state that's uh, very progressive in a lot of ways. Uh, me and a good buddy. Uh, have formed a company called Umbo, which is uh, a mushroom company, which a lot of people giggle and they don't, they tell, oh, wow, mushrooms. Yeah, you're in Colorado where it's legal. I'm like, no, these are legal mushrooms. They've been legal through a a long time. They've been sold at Whole Foods, Sprouts, all these places. We've just been able to bring them a little bit more into the light. And with the confusion around psychedelic mushrooms and functional mushrooms, you know, stepping into another, just kind of a, a way to, to holistically take the, your, your health back in your own hands. It's a positive intervention that will give you whatever edge you need. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of research out there, but for me, it's just the experience. Uh, if you want to try these products, they're great. Uh, they've helped me a lot. That's all I can say. That's if fantastic. you want to try them, you got to try them. But being a, being into another entrepreneurial uh, adventure has been a lot of fun. But uh, again, it's you're always chasing something, and I'm kind of tired of chasing things. But with this with co- this company, it's fun because I get people send me emails or texts about how how 
what it's doing to help them in their lives, whether that's nice. sleeping better or recovering better or, you know, just feeling better overall. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, I do still enjoy, you know, playing handball, been playing a lot of pickleball, uh, just trying to create that lifestyle of, of in, having joy every day, riding yeah. my bike, going to yoga, uh, being conscious of how I speak to people, how I treat people, and it, it all comes back around. So it's thanks to my well mom said. and my family for raising me right, yeah. uh, being able to be able to come back and be on a show like this with you guys. I mean, we've known each other for a long time. And, uh, you know, life just kind of keeps getting sweeter. Uh, yeah. Listen, I, I, I remember hanging with your mom and dad in, an, in a hotel bar in Dallas the night you guys beat the Cowboys in the playoffs. <laughs> and, yeah. right, I mean, this is how far back yeah. we go. Uh, and, you know, over the course of years, every time ASU uh, brings in a new head coach, people always want to know – to hear from you because yeah. you you're sort of like you know you've been an ambassador for ASU all this time. What do you think of Kenny Dillingham? What do you think of this direction of ASU football? You know, it, it's an interesting environment in college football. As I was in, I was in Boulder watching the prime effect on CU. So you have Kenny Dillingham and Deion Sanders, head coaches. There's obviously a discrepancy there in like social impact and the ability to influence with Primetime and Kenny Dillingham. Oh, yeah. But I believe that Kenny, even he knows the game. He's studied the game. He brings in some good coaches. I like what he's doing. He's going to put in some hard work. He's from here. He is not looking to go somewhere else. Like, this was his target to be the head coach at when he was a child. Mm -hmm. That's his dream. So he has landed in his dream job. My only concern is will the Valley give him time to – to put into place what has to happen. It's a, it's gotta be, it's the cultural shift, but you don't get a chance to spend three, four years with these kids. They're sure. bouncing to the next school or they're wanting to go somewhere else where it may be easier entry into a starting position. So I, I, it, it's going to be a tricky, it's going to be tricky. You got to get the good players in, get them primed and ready, get them, re uh, obviously bought into to the culture and and go and have and a you got to get them paid yeah you got to get them paid. but but all main thing number one is like you got to get tone setters you got to get a couple guys that can come in and right away like this is what we're doing and if no one else if people aren't following then you got to get rid of them you got to let them go and and you have to have a quarterback you have to have a qb that can come in and take control and set the tone number one for the whole entire program to follow. Uh, and, and I think if they do that, they're going to be all right. I mean, this year wasn't what everybody expected. Um, injuries, a uh, little bit of, you know, you know, we can't avoid that in football. But I know Kenny's working, and they're recruiting hard, and mm -hmm. they're working the portal, and he knows that really, really well. He knows it because he's – he has come up in the system what it's now become. So he's very well versed in it, knows how to get these guys here. And I think that they've already made a couple good moves, bringing in some some uh, players that can make an impact right away. Uh, Jake Plummer uh, in studio with us, co-grand marshal of the Verbo Fiesta Bowl Parade. It's going on tomorrow. You hinted at all the change in college football, Jake. And, and a lot of people lament all this change. You got the NIL. You got the transfer portal. Um, you got the demise of the conference that you were a superstar in with the Pac-10, Pac-12 going away. Just lo love to get your overall thoughts on, on that. It, it's it's painful for a lot of us. Yeah, I mean, painful how? You know, you know, you get a tooth pulled out, that hurts. But yeah, yeah. the Pac-12 being, being uh, you know, disintegrated and going away, it's a bummer because there's a rich history mm -hmm. there. Uh, you know, back all the way to the Pac-8. I mean, there's just been a lot of tradition, a lot of great football games, a lot of great players. I think we're watching college realign into a model that's similar to the NFL. I mean, we're already looking at free agency Basically, gone yeah. wild. Like, yep. You're not this free in the NFL to go choose your teams. <laughs> These college players can go wherever they want, yeah. get whatever they want, and then bounce the next year without yeah. any – any repercussions or nothing. So you're watching free agency happen at college now. And college football, I don't know if it's more of a channel to make money and get to the NFL, or is it a chance for these kids to get an education? So there's a little bit of a, you know, people want to lament about the Pac-12 going away, but teams have to go where the money is. They have to go where the sure. exposure is. And if you don't have that, you're going to be left out of the conversation to get these five-star recruits, four-star recruits, or these tone setters that I talk about. Yeah. So I don't like to see it happen because anything done for money I don't think is the right way. I never played college ball to go make millions in the NFL. In fact, I never played 
when I got to the Cardinals thinking, oh, I'm going to make millions. I just played because I wanted to win. I wanted to win. I wanted to win a Super Bowl. I wanted to win a national championship. I wanted to be the best at where I was be the best where I was at at that moment. And so the money was just a part of that. So yeah. getting the money, great. I've had, you know, since 24, been had financial freedom. That's awesome. That NFL is great. But I still played hard until the game was no more fun for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now what are these kids' motivation? Coming out of high school, you can sign for a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million dollars. Like, my motivation, too, was, was to buy my mom a house, buy my mom a car, support my family help people out so that was some of my motivation but when you get that money early what is your motivation anymore yeah what's going to drive you to want to be the best so it's an interesting environment all around in football all the way down to you know youth sports youth football so enjoy it enjoy it in the state that it's at because we really don't have any control that's true unless you're the you know, unless you're high up in some power position to make an influence, you just got to sit back and, and enjoy and, and send love to these kids. Hopefully yeah. they they come out of it okay without much, uh, you know, regret or without any like, oh, I made a bad decision. You hope they come out of it healthy and in good spirits. Jake, great to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Awesome Best of luck seeing with you, all brother. Your with uh, Umbo. Thanks, thanks for the samples too, by the way. Yeah, right uh, on. Well, and have fun at the parade. Bring that territorial wave cup back. Yeah, I will, Look man. Got the waving, my man. Thank Here you guys go. for having me. Thank I hope you, to see a bunch of you out there on yeah. tomorrow at the, on the parade route. Looking forward to it. Jake Plummer, co-grand marshal of the Verbo Fiesta Bowl Parade, joining us in studio here on Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.